Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. As well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. This is an introductory course for brioche Tunisian style. So when I say introductory I don't mean like you're a brand new crochet or you, you barely ever saw a hook in the store. You know how to crochet but you wanna go to the next level. This is an introductory course for that. So this particular cowl that you have here is brioche and it's a breathtaking brioche cowl and it's using a double ended crochet hook. So if you've ever seen these you can see that they're much bigger than a regular crochet hook. And what we're going to do is that we need this and we're gonna also be crocheting or doing Tunisian stitches in the round. This is a two step repeat pattern in order to get it to go. So it looks like it's a lot of extra work. It's really not but you do need to be prepared. So we do need some things for you to have before you get started which includes the double ended hook but I wanna show you the sample first. So this here is brioche and you can see it's really quite wonderful. You can see that it's slanting up on one side and kind of going off in the other direction. It's just a matter of doing the increasing and the decreasing right at the same point. This is in multiples of 12. So this particular cowl is you will see that it's 108 stitches when you get past the first uh, section and that is in 12. So if you want the cowl to be bigger just keep it in multiples of 12 and you'll be satisfied. This is going in the round. So if, if you wanna email me and say what would you be if you just want to do a flat piece. I don't know the answer to that. It, for myself I just know it as the round at this moment. So you can see that it's really kind of wavy. It does the waves on its own so that's not something that you have to worry about uh, specifically uh, too hard I guess and it's really really neat. So the back of it looks just like this and we're also using two uh, different yarn balls at the same time. So you will notice that it's transitioning. You can see that the, the pink here is in the front and in the background in the filler is another color. So the main color that is most dominant to your eyes is color A and then the filler color is color B. I found with myself that when the main color is kind of more consistent it, and the other color is not so close like you see it almost gets to the same kind of colors. You can see it, it really does change the story and in, in very much a cool way. So let's uh, talk about what we need to do to get started because it is all about the prep work in order to do this particular concept. So on screen are stitch markers. So I want to have two stitch markers that are absolutely just bonkers in the sense that it will catch your attention when you go all the way around. So the two will indicate that I have here that when I go all the way around. So when I hit those uh, unique ones you'll see that. I also want eight of one color of another one. So I want eight of the sherbet color here and I also want eight of these. So as I mentioned you need two balls of yarn that you'll use at the same time. Ball number one color A is the one that forms the stitches onto the hook. So it's the dominant color. You see it's kind of the pinkish here and it's the dominant one that has the lines that appear in the front of the project. Color B is the filler that is showing up in between the lines. And so color B I have on the other side of the hook. So the one side of the hook you're creating the stitches and on the other side you're finishing the stitches. In Tunisian the forward pass collects the stitches and the return pass finishes the stitches. But because this is a double ended hook the forward pass that we're about to do is gonna create the stitches and when we need to finish these stitches all we just need to do is turn around the hook and then just uh, yarn over and pull through two and two and two. So you're always rotating in the same direction. So if you're left handed you will go into this direction. You'll go towards the right and if you're right handed like me you'll go towards the left like you naturally would. The trick is is that these yarn tails or sorry these uh, strands going to the balls you don't wanna mix those up. So you don't want them having the taggle. So you're gonna get in the habit of turning this around so that the strands to the balls never get twisted. So in the crochetcrowd.com we have a brioche Tunisian worksheet. It matches this cowl, also matches this stitch work if you'd like to do this. Again you can make it any size. So I talk about in this particular one is that you'll be using both ends of the hook. So you wanna make sure that you don't get an afghan hook. So an afghan hook um, if you were to look at it, let's just see if I have one here. So an afghan hook that is a regular Tunisian has a stopper at the end. These are not the ones you want. You want the ones that have the hook on both sides here. Okay, so there are different sizes available. It's recommending a six and a half millimeter size K hook in order to play with this particular concept. So it's really not hard. So just make sure that you have a double ended hook. 
We're also recommending and this is my friend Megan's tip which is a really great tip is that round number three and four there's a repeat. If you use the same color stitch markers each time you can look back at your project and say okay in round three I'm going to just put in here right now that I'm going to say that I used the Sherbert color. So round three I'll use Sherbert as my color and then in round four I will use the, the lime color. So whenever I'm using this, so when I put my project down and I see that the last stitch marker is lime, I know that I've just finished a round four and so round three would be next. So that's an easy way to be able to determine where you are when you put down a hook and you go to bed and you get up in the morning and you don't know where you are. So let's flip the page and let's go to page number two. Page number two we also have the um, helpful tips. So what I realized in number uh, row number two or round number two when we're about to do that it's always in sets of two. So round number two is before it starts doing all that waving starting to going off we're gonna get ourselves established and it's in sets of 12 like I mentioned. So what I noticed with myself is that when you do this it's called a rib stitch. The first stitch is a Tunisian simple and the second stitch is a twisted Tunisian simple. Two different stitches. So together it makes a rib stitch and you'll see that in the pattern. So there's 12 stitches that are in a repeat. So what I realized is that when you go and do this, so it's Tunisian simple for one, two is the twisted, three is the simple, four is the twisted and what I realized is that when it's an even number like two, four, six, eight, ten and twelve it's always twisted in row number two. And so after the end of row or the um, stitch number twelve of that you wanna mark it with your first set of stitch markers in order to get yourself going. And you will notice that there is row number one and then it says round two, three, four. So row number one is just a row and then we start going in the rounds. The problem with these hooks here is that they're straight, right? So you can never, once you get started, you can never go around the whole thing. Let's just here. You can never go around the whole thing because this hook is not bent and that's not a problem. So what's gonna happen is that when you do this you're gonna do about half of it in the section and then you'll finish off those stitches and then do the other half getting yourself back around. So it was really quite an easy be way to be able to find that in order to do that. So what I wanna do right in the beginning is that I need to secure this round in round number two and get those ends hidden in to create that so that there is no seam lines at all in this particular project because I pulled it together right at the very beginning just like you see. This is just a stitch marker for my own reference. So it's really quite um, neat. So you wanna be prepared to do that. So page number three has three sets of diagrams. The middle diagram is the main diagram and the bottom and the top are exactly what you see here but they've been labeled in a way that makes sense for me as an educator but also for me the way that I learn. So when we go to look at this row number one as we're going across is just going to be um, the simple stitch. Row, round two that's when we convert to a round we're going to do the rib stitching so it's a simple twist, simple twist and every twelfth you will place the stitch marker when you get that there. Then in round three we begin the fancy work by eliminating out a stitch right in the beginning, continuing the rib, we do an increase in the back bar or the horizontal bar and then we do in the same stitch here as a simple stitch so it's sharing the same one and then we do the ribs. The whole secret to this thing is the number 12. 12 always seems to work out and that's because it's what it is. So round number four we're gonna do a decrease so we're just gonna pick up these two and do a decrease and you can see that we do a twist and then this section here is a rib. So th these two make up a rib so is this one. We're leaving with the simple and then we do an increase in the uh, top or horizontal back bar and then a simple just like you see. So this whole thing is going to shift and make this shape. So what using a six and a half millimeter size K double ended crochet hook. This is also called an afghan hook if you're ever looking for it. You'll find these available online as well as in stores. So you're gonna create a slip knot and if you're not new to crochet this is nothing new for you and you're gonna create a slip knot and you need to chain, put the loop on there and you need to chain 107. So just, just start counting. So just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9 and 10 and go all the way to 107 for me. Maybe back here in just a moment. 
So I've now just chained 107. I've actually done the whole 107 so that it's accurate for you. So usually in crochet with regular stitches we go second chain from the hook. Okay, so we go right there. In Tunisian here we go in the loop that is right behind the first one. So this what makes it 108 because the first loop counts as one. So you're gonna go right into the first loop that is right directly behind there so it's not the second and you're going to start picking it up. So yarn over, pick up and slide so that it gets beyond the throat of the hook and it gets to the width it needs. You're then going to go to the next back loop of the chain, pick it up, yarn over and slide. You can probably get, at least I did, is that you're gonna get all 108 loops on your hook. It's gonna get really tight and dicey but just force it on and you should get it all onto your hook. So continue just to pick up here. This is the start of Tunisian simple stitch but you're starting with the chain so we have to start somewhere. So just start picking up your, your chain there, yarning over, pulling it up and just slide and then we'll continue from this particular point. So go all the way down to the end of your chain. So I'm coming up all the way to the end and just grabbing every chain. Now usually with the simple stitch like so with the regular Tunisian you would just chain up one, pull through the first one and then yarn over and pull through two, two, two all the way back to the other side. But on this side here there's a crochet hook so we're not gonna do that in this one. So the main color, color A that you're seeing here is always gonna be the one to create the new loops and color B is always gonna be the one to finish the stitch. The problem is is that if this yarn here is where we're gonna be building you just cannot finish this stitch by pulling the secondary color through and finishing it. So this is why there's a double ended hook. So what we're going to do is just get this yarn strand out of the way and rotate the hook so that the very other side of the hook is where we're gonna start. And we're gonna grab our color B and get ready and let's show you how to do this. So this will be the completion of a simple stitch. Leaving a long yarn tail just create a slip knot to begin. I always like that just for my own benefit. And I'm going to slip this onto the hook. This is not counted as a stitch. So don't say this is a stitch. So all I'm just doing is putting it onto the hook and I'm pulling it through the first one only. Like that. And now you're ready to go. Okay, so this is the first one. So now we're just gonna yarn over and pull through two and we're gonna pull through two until there's only three loops of the main color left. And this is gonna fill in this color, uh, the spaces between the vertical loops that you see here on the hook. So you're yarning over and pulling it through all the way to the other side except for you're going to leave the last three loops on the hook of the gray color because we then have to form the round. You will notice that we've not used the stitch markers yet because we're gonna kick those off in the next one. So you can see that this, because this is not attached to anything it's not considered a round. This, so this is row number one of the foundation and then round number two is when we start uh, joining it because the last three stitches is when we're gonna make that happen. So keep yarning over and pulling it through two all the way to the other side. And if this, just slide it up, right? So you see that the stitch work you just keep sliding. So that becomes more and more available. If you slide too much then it gets a little bunchy but if you don't slide enough it will pull probably a little bit too much. So you just wanna just get used to the motion of the ocean here with this particular concept. So just go and leave me three stitches at the end. Once you have three loops left I want you to slide the hook now to the other side. Just like this, just slide and now you have the hook on this side. You have to be very careful at this moment. We need to attach the one side of this. So keeping the pink up, it, it could be a different color for you but you wanna make sure that there is absolutely no infinity twist. So keeping it up on the other side we want to place the last vertical strand on the other side. Just put it in. You're not doing anything with it but just put it in. So just right in the loop itself and just put it onto the hook. Do you see that? I want you to verify that this can literally be followed around and it stays on the same side. So that was part of my issue of starting three times. 
Megan came up with the idea, she uses it in knitting, is just use the two yarn tails that you have that's in front of you. This is where I was getting confused the most because I would get these yarn tails confused and just pull them together with a little knot. Pull them together. And I cannot stress enough that I think you should get rid of this right away. So with the tapestry needle I want you to place the yarn, the one color and match it to the same color. So if it's gray I want you to go through only the gray section and just trap it into position so that it'll always be stuck. So you're basically fastening it in it right away. So instead of doing a whole project and you have tails at the beginning of your work that you deal with at the end, deal with it right now. Just get it right out of your hands and uh, so that it's in there. You're gonna wanna do both strands like this. So the pink, you'll match it to the pink color to keep it well hidden and just make sure that it will stay out of your way and once you're satisfied with it, just cut it right out and you will never confuse this yarn tail as being part of the project and confusing your eyes. So I'm gonna leave you to do the other side, the other uh, color here, the pink. So now that my tails are woven in, I wanna make sure that my yarn strands are clear and I should only have two. So one strand will always be on one side of the hook. In this case, the pink will always be this side and the gray will always be on the other side. So we noticed that the last two stitches here were not dealt with. We're not ready to finish those but we are ready to turn our hook and we'll finish those in just a moment. So what we're going to do is just turn our hook and when I put it on, watch what I did. So when I put it on, you will realize that I'm on the loop on the back side of this one here. So just pull it out and put it in the front side vertical. Like there. If your yarn strand is coming like over, over top, you gotta make sure it's always coming from the back of the hook. So in my case, in this particular moment, I have to make sure that I'm getting that from the back. So I can either just do this and get it from the back or I can move the yarn ball through there as well. So let's try again and through the front and making sure that the gray is coming from the back. This is when we're gonna start doing row num or round number two and this is when we start going in a circle and this is only when we can actually go a portion of the way around instead of all the way. So remember for row number two it's all about the rib stitch. So it's, it's simple twist, simple twist but it's in groups of 12 and now we have to get ready and be able to put in our stitch markers with every um, particular, we, with every um, 12th stitch. So I wrote on my sheet, if you remember in the very beginning that Sherbert was round number three. This is round number two. So I wanna use the stitch marker color for round number four. In the first loop here that I'm about to make here, it's gonna be a Tunisian simple stitch. So coming from behind, just yarn over, pull through and this here is the start of a round. I wanna put my unique stitch marker so it's either one of the two that you have and I wanna put that onto the particular project. Um, jo uh, clips like this are a little bit harder so I like the other ones a lot better but you have to decide what works for you. I'm trying to figure out what I have here at, how, at home that actually makes sense. So just clip it on and that becomes the first stitch of the round and that was also a simple stitch. So the next one is gonna be a twisted simple stitch. So how you do that, you ready? is that here in the vertical bars are where you're gonna play. So instead of going into the vertical bar, you're just gonna grab the vertical bar. So pull it like this and I'll show you several times and just turn the hook downward and pull it up like this and it's now got a twist and then yarning over pulling it through. So that was one of two. So the first one was uh, a simple, it's an even number so it's a twist. So number three is a simple, so just going right in, pull through and the fourth is an uh, even number so just pull on it, rotate around and pull through. That was four. So five is a simple, 
six is a twist. So just pull on it, rotate and then pull. Okay, so that was six. Seven is the simple. Eight is a twist. Nine, it's an odd number so it's a simple. Ten is a twist, it's an even number. Eleven is a simple. And twelve is a twist. And on the twelfth one here, I wanna use the same colors as marked for number uh, rounds number four. So in this case it'll be lime. So I'm gonna take my stitch marker and slide it right into that loop and lock it. And that's the twelfth stitch. And that'll help you keep an eye on this whole thing. So you're just gonna carry on and start and start at number one again. So just one is a simple, two is a twist, three is simple, four is a twist, five is a simple, six is a twist, seven, simple, eight is a twist, nine simple, ten is a twist, eleven simple, and 12 is a twist. So I remembered that the even numbers are always easier and then you put in the same color marker. So put the lime in and mark that 12 and you wanna do this all the way around. So when you go to do this, the last one here, uh, that would be here. You gotta rem remember that we're not quite done this one. So we'll be finishing that one and, and when you pass this one here, you know that you would have done the round. So continue to go. You cannot go all the way around. You can go about three quarters and then we're gonna turn our hook and then finish off these stitches here so we can continue to go around. So just continue about three quarters of the way around. So I've been going in my sets. You can see that I have not gone all the way around because it's impossible, right? Because I'm on the one side of the hook. So because I feel like I can't go any further, I probably could have probably gone another 12 but then I don't wanna stretch it. So what I'm gonna do is slide the project down to the other side of the hook and right where this pink is, I want to be able to pull that in into the rest of the project. So let's just slide everything down the other side and rotate the hook. So when I rotate it, I wanna make sure that this yarn is free and clear. So if you remember, and I'm not too worried about it, is that we're just gonna continue in sets of two. So the time that I did it and I started with the just pull through the one loop, that was the one time thing only. So you're just gonna with this color just fill it. So just pull through two loops and keep on doing that and pass right up over top of the beginning one that you started with. You can always pull things tighter if you have to in the end and keep pulling through twos. So you can see that the secondary color, color B, is just about filling in the stitches that you created. And as you're doing this, you're releasing more off the hook so that you can leave room for that and then rotate the remaining of this project around so that you can continue to do it. So the stitch markers that you see that are hanging really gives you an indication where the sets of 12 are but you can also see where my gumball machine is. That's the start of the round so you never get confused on where you are. So just continue to pull through sets of two and then we'll pick back up and rotate the hook the other way. And I would do it so that there's probably about three stitches left again and then rotate the hook and continue along with there. You would have noticed that I stopped when I stopped the gray, I stopped it right on a stitch marker. It makes sense to do that. Um, it doesn't make sense to stop in the middle of a repeat because it's harder to count that way. So let's continue to go and I'll see you in just a moment. So I'm coming close to the remaining. So I wanna leave about three stitches left on the hook and then I wanna rotate the whole project again. So there's my three. So when I rotate this, I wanna be conscientious where the yarn strands are coming from and rotate it in a way that it makes sense for you to do that so that you don't stay tangled at all. So I'm gonna rotate this way and I'm gonna pick the gray back up and I'm gonna pull this loop or pull the strand so it's sitting towards me and I'm gonna continue. So you can see that the stitch markers are not in play. You can see my gumball machine, that's where I started so I'm not done this round. And so after I turn, I move everything to this side of the hook so that I can pick up the gray once again and continuing to do my simple and twist 
and simple and twist in groups of 12 and leaving myself then the stitch markers after the end of each 12. So please continue to do this until you get to the gumball machine or you're starting. So by now this part of the project you should have groups of 12. If you get all the way around like I am and I have two extra stitches I don't know what happened. You can either go back and count and make sure all your stitches are looking right or you can trust in yourself and saying you know what I probably accidentally did an extra couple thing. So I can put two together as a single crochet two together and uh, when you're going to do that in order to get it back into the groups of 12. So in the final one of 12 I'm not gonna put a stitch marker because the first stitch here has been marked with a stitch marker as I has started with. So this will continue or cancel out then row number two or round number two and we're now going to start round number three and let's pull up the diagram because now this is when the fun start starts to happen as it's repeating our rows number three and four. So what I did for myself is that I have a diagram and I want you, see it says fold here, I want you to fold this diagram in a way that it's at the folded line. And I want you to fold the diagram where it says the other folded line. Like this. So what I want to do is that when I am using this pattern, if I'm on row number three it's facing up and then when I'm on row number four I'm gonna switch it and then change it to row number four. This helps me not to be able to get confused. So row number three we're gonna start our fancy work here which is not really that fancy at all but it's, it's a fun word. So we're gonna start with the decrease and putting the two together and then we're gonna do three rib stitches. So it's the Tunisian and the twist, Tunisian twist, Tunisian twist. We're then going to do an increase on the back bar or the horizontal bar on the top and that is gonna share the same stitch as this one and we're gonna come down and get the simple stitch and twist which is a rib and it's simple and twist and at the end of the 12th stitch we wanna place a stitch marker. So this is when we change the color of the stitch markers to be um, the other color that we're gonna play with. Let's start round number three. Full transparency I switched out my gumball machine with the opposite color of the stitch marker for the green section. So when it goes opposite I can see it. This is how I did the original. The gumball machine uh, stitch marker is a little too heavy for the stitch and it's pulling it out of whack. So we're gonna start then on the first one. So it's going to be two together. So we're just gonna slide in to the first one and the second. I wanna make sure it, it just loosened up when I did that. So you wanna first the first two and then yarning over pulling it through two. This is a two together simple stitch. This is the start of the next round. So I, what I'm gonna do is even though we're gonna use a Sherbert for this round I'm just switching the stitch marker around so when I hit the green I will know that that's where I am. So it's kind of the opposite to what is happening for the rest of the round. So what we've done put the first two together. The next six stitches the way that I counted. So one and two became together. So the next ones are rips. So it's a Tunisian simple for one and twist for two. Simple stitch for three. Twist for four. Simple for five and twist for six. You will notice that the twist uh, stitches kind of match the twists that are below. Now we have only four stitches left. You can see that. Do you see that? We have one, two, three, four. So do you see that this hump here right here? That's the increase. That's the back bar or the horizontal bar at the top. So you want to go into that first and do an increase. So just going into that bar, yarning over, pulling it through. There's your increase. And coming in the same stitch, the vertical straight down, you see that there's only four away, you're gonna start a rib again. So you're just gonna do simple and then twist, simple and twist is your last. And then you're gonna place your stitch marker in the twelfth one. I'm gonna take you through one more repeat of this. Just slide things down if you have to. Again at any time you can turn this hook around and just finish these off by pulling through twos. So let's start the next set. So starting in the first two, let's get the stitch markers out of the way. 
is that you're just gonna go into the two verticals and pull through. So those one, two just became together and now the next six are rib stitches. So it's gonna be simple for one, twist for two, simple for three, twist for four, simple for five, and twist for six. And now we're gonna do the increase and if you look at it, there should only be four stitches left and there is. See the stitch marker? So one, two, three, four. So we have to do an increase on the back bar only and then the remaining four verticals are is the rib stitching. So it's one for simple, two for twist, three for simple, and four for twist. And that's your another group of 12 done and you place your stitch marker in and you do that. So you're gonna go all the way around and you will hit the very beginning one. Now when you're ready and say that you're getting too much um, product on your hook, just turn it around and at any time you can offload it. So just grabbing the pink by turning it around and just going in sets of two like you have been. So just slide everything down to the other side and just tighten this back up before you start and then pull through twos. And then I would leave three stitches on and then turn it around and continue. So you can see that this color B is all about finishing the stitch and color A is all about creating the stitch. So continue with round number three all the way around and then I will show you round number four and then rows three and four are the only things that you need to repeat for the remaining and then the very final row when you're ready and you get that high is just the rib stitch that you know it that you did in round number two which is basically Tunisian simple and twist, simple and twist all the way through without doing any increases or decreases. Please do this all the way around. This is round number three. So I've just coming all the way around on number three. I haven't cast off the other side yet like finished it. Now I wanna indicate to you, so when I know that I'm all the way around, there can only be two stitch markers when I get all the way around because the other ones there was only one until I put in the last one. So once I get around, you will see that there's two stitch markers there and you know that you would have gone all the way around. So before I begin a new round, round number four, I'm just gonna switch around my project here and then begin to uh, come off on the other side and get that done so I have a nice clean slate to be able to work with. Again, pull this yarn nice and tight um, in order for you to, to start and keep going in those, uh, just yarning over and doing in sets of two. So just release all of them, leave about three stitches on and then we will start round number four next. So now that I just have the last three, so I'm just gonna switch the hook and I'm gonna get ready. Now before I continue, I wanna take the last, uh, the second last layer of stitch marker. So when I was doing this, uh, remember that this first one here, the sherbet, is the first color here. It's opposite to what the entire row is. So leaving it open in front of me, I'm going to take out the, la uh, the second last stitch markers all the way around. By leaving them right in front of me like so, and I left them on my lap when I was I'm sitting on my chair. So I wanna take out the that set and leave it in front. So when I pass my sets of 12, I can just reach up, slam them in and then keep on going. So please do this first and then we'll move on to row number four together. So let's begin round number th four. So if you had three, just unfold it and refold. So four is up. So in the first two, they're gonna come together like we had been before. We're gonna then do a twist immediately instead and then the next two sets are ribs. So it's a simple twist, simple twist. There's gonna be one simple standing by itself. So these two here that you see number two and number seven are by themselves. You're then going to do an increase like you had and then sharing the same last four stitches. It's just like what you did before. So the only difference here is these two stitches compared to row number three is that you're just switching locations and you'll see that happening and that's because of this decrease that we're doing and the increase. So it's just adjusting and then you go back to number three in the next round after this. Again after the end of number 12, place your stitch markers as well. So let's start row number four. So the first two are gonna become together. So just sliding into the vertical strands and pull through and 
I slide the opposite one. So the one that's by itself is the one that I will put in there. So I can see that when I get back around. So again when you run back all the way around it, it's the only one that will have two in there by the time you get all the way around. The rest of these are just sitting by themselves as one. So let's the first two it together and now the next one see how it's got a weird twist to it. That's a twisted one. Let me just bring you in a little closer. If you can identify these stitches this is a very helpful tip. So you can see that this one's a simple. See that one's got a twist. So it wants you to maintain the twist first. So make it a twist and then the next four are the regular uh, rib stitch. So you can see it's simple, simple and then these two here two and four are already a twist. So you're just maintaining. So it's a simple and then a twist. This is number two. Three is a simple and four is a twist. But before you move on to do an increase the last one here is a simple. You're gonna keep that as a simple. So just remember that it's kind of opposite. So if that's a twist this must be a simple. You then have four stitches left. You can see them one, two, three, four. Before you start though you have to do an increase on the back bar. Just a simple on the back bar and then start with the last four of a simple for one, twist for two, simple for three. I'll take you through another section of this and twist for four. When you get that final one in there that's the twelfth you can see it's marked. Move your stitch marker in place just grab it up and throw it in. These stitch markers are really easy to work with. So let's do another grouping. So the first two just see how it's kind of looking like they're together because they are. So the first two become together. So slipping first and second together. And the, because this is number four the next one is a twist and then you start your rib stitching. So the next four are ribs. So it's a simple, a twist, a simple, a twist. And before you do the increase you still have one more simple left. So simple it and now the increase. So you see that there's five stitches left over one two or sorry four left over one two three four. So in the top bar you will put in your increase. It can be tight sometimes. And then you have your uh, four left over. So it's a simple and then a twist, a simple and a twist and then mark that one as the twelfth and then keep on going around. So when you're ready and you got too much on your hook just release the other side just turn your hook get rid of the yarn and it takes about um, about two inches before you'll start really seeing the, the turning effect of this. You will start seeing a riffling, uh, ruffling and continue. So let's continue along then for row number four or round four and I'll see you at the end of that round. So I'm just coming up to the end of number four here and you're really not gonna start seeing the pattern develop quite yet. You can kind of start seeing the lean and we're now going to switch from four. So get your paperwork and switch back and we begin round number three again. So we do already have this part of the uh, video film. So you can go back and go to look at that. So you're just gonna repeat rounds number three and four until you're satisfied and then the very final round let's just uh, take a look at the other project that I was working on. I wanna get this one done too and it's about 12 inches tall that they want you to do. So you can finish. I'm going to finish at the 12 inch mark but if these balls run out sooner I'm gonna stop then. So this is using Red Heart Colorscape that I used uh, for that particular sample. So when you're satisfied with it all you just need to do is repeat row number two. So remember it's a twist and uh, sorry simple twist, simple twist, simple twist and then when you come off with the color B you're finishing it and you wanna finish all the way to the end and all you you'd want to do is just weave in your ends and then you got a good cowl. So because this is Tunisian you're gonna want a, a damp blocket. So just damp it up a little bit. Lay it flat to dry 
dry and that will get rid of these curls that you have and you'll see that you will have a slight wave in this project and that's kind of neat and this is a really neat idea. So this is an introductory to brioche uh, using the Tunisian. It's really not a hard technique. It's more about getting started than anything. So uh, hopefully that you've enjoyed and you can download the worksheet on our website thecrochetcrowd.com. Have a good one and we hope to see you again real soon right here. Bye bye.